Hello, it's Shirley Ross, a Clifton Heart Consultant, and today it's My Favorite Stamp Monday, and I'm going to share the stamp I'm using this month, which is C1832 um, Fairy Tale Magic, or if you want it with the thin cuts, it's Z3704. The thin cut is always shown in a um, color, so the thin cut will be for the fairy. Now I'm going to be working with the little swag, floral swag. It has some little mushrooms on it and I'm going to take my block and I'm going to set it on the paper. Now this is a retired block. It's one that I've kept because I like it. But um, you could use, if you have a misty stamping platform or any kind of stamping platform, you could use it. You can use, we have a 5 by 7 that would work. I'm just using the block so I can see through and actually line up where I want the stamp to go because uh, this is the card we're making and I'm going to do an oval. I'm going to show you how I hid the upside down mushrooms there. It has a floral plus it has um, the mushrooms in the bottom corner. So I'm going to ink it up, and this might take just a minute, I want to make sure I get it really good and inked. It might be a little too inky in some places, I have just refilled my ink. Now I did get a little bit at the top, hold on, I had a tissue, of course, now I can't find it, I'll just use this, that keep it from, in case I accidentally rock it. Let me huff it and reactivate the ink as I took a few minutes there. And I'm going about three quarters to a half an inch up. And press down. Now I'm using my Versamat turned over. So it is the stamping platform, so it's kind of squishy. And I have my all-purpose mat on top because I'm going to be coloring. And I cut my all-purpose mat. It's This is half of it. I cut it in half so that I can carry half of it with me when I travel. So it's in my travel bag. And then I keep one on my craft table. So let's do the second one. Once you've got it on there, it's lined up. And so now you have a nice oval to put your sentiment in the middle. It's not perfectly straight. That's where, um, if I wasn't on doing it on the video, I would have gotten it a little bit better. But that's okay, because I'm gonna make several of these. So I want to, um, I'm going to keep the stamp out so I don't have to realign it again. So once I've got that done, I want to do the sentiment. And the sentiment says, life is a wonderful fairy tale. So I'm going to ink it up, make sure I get it good and inked. Let's press down into the center. There we go. So that is the completion of the the card front as far as that goes then I have some scrap pieces that I keep on my table I'm gonna make some more so I will leave that one on there and on this one I'm going to stamp the little mushrooms so, because I'm gonna actually hand cut those out so I'm gonna put it on it doesn't really matter um, if it's straight because I'm gonna hand fussy cut those out so I did the double mushroom. I'm going to leave it on so I don't have to put it on again. And then I'm going to do the single mushroom. I don't know why I like mushrooms on stamping on cards, but I do. We've had a couple of them. So now we're ready to do some coloring. So I'm going to color with the uh, alcohol markers that we carry now. And those are the tri-blends. And what I am going to do... What I've done in the past is I really like the um, dark red blend and we have the light medium and dark all on one and I'm going to use the light this time there we go and I'm gonna just color and you want to be careful when you color with the alcohol markers because they bleed out so you want to go fast and if you're going to do any blending, which I'm not now, I would just do each section separate because you want it to be kind of wet if you're going to do blending. 
but with this I'm going to just be doing straight coloring that colored outside that's the fun of doing it on the video and I'm just gonna share with you how I colored them I'm not going to um, have you sit here and watch me fussy cut I'll just share the original card now since I am only doing going to use these bottom mushrooms those are the only ones that I have to color in because I'm actually going to hide the other ones with the cutout now you can use whatever color scheme you could use watercolors uh, you could use um, colored pencils you could use just regular markers whatever you want to do it's totally up to you Okay, make sure I got all of it. All right, and then I will come in and I'm going to use the medium. And I'm going to color the spots in the medium. Just like that. This one doesn't have as many up, and I missed the mushroom. I'll go ahead and color his spots and then come back and color the rest. I guess I'm going to bore you with all this coloring. All right. Got it. All right. Come back with the light. Sometimes it wants to stick when I put it on. Ah. There we got it. <laughs> you know it's not going to dry out. It definitely, the lid definitely goes on tight. All right, so that's what I do with the um, with the dark red blend. Now I'm going to come in and I actually do a um, a gray. I like this uh, brown gray blend, and I'm going to again just use the light one, and I'm going to color the underneath of several of the mushrooms. I'm not going to do the um, large one. I'm going to do that one all in the next color. And again, I just real quickly, I'm not doing any blending. I'm just going to color them in, trying to stay as close to being in the lines as possible so as not to make it too messy. And then I'm going to take the earth brown and I'm going to do the light again. And this time I'm going to color the stems of all the mushrooms with this one. And like I said, it's just a matter of doing a quick kind of touch. I call it a flick motion, but it's not really flicking. You're just touching and drawing out a little ink and then just moving on quickly. Because if you leave it on the paper for long, it will just spread out. And that will be the end of your project. Now, if you wanted to give a little depth to the mushrooms here, you could have done them darker, or you could just come in and do a second coat with the, the light, and that does make it a little bit darker. And again, you're only working with these three little mushrooms here because the top ones are going to be covered with that mushroom that you, you those mushrooms you're going to cut out. All right, so... The stems are done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the green. I am backing it with a, this was part of our fur, um, furry friends paper special we had a couple months back and I'm going to use that as the mat. So I'm going to use our um, light green blend. It has the dark, the dark is really close to that, but I'm going to use the light to color the leaves. And I'm just going to real quickly color them. They're kind of small, so it's, it goes pretty fast. You just want to make sure that you get them all. And several, I'll go around several times and just look because you'll be surprised at how you might miss a leaf. I'm going to color this one. I'm not sure if it's going to show, but just in case it does, I'm going to color it. So I hope I'm not boring you just with watching me color. I 
have not quite conquered the process video where I can, but I might be able to speed it up when I'm editing. I am not the best video editor. I do love to share the videos. I do love for you to learn new things and try new things. So I hope that you do uh, play with some coloring. Almost there. I don't want it to just be dead silence while I'm coloring. I just, I, this stamp set will go so well with the snail mail stamp set from Amy Ferry that's also being offered. I used it not long ago to create some really cute accents on my envelopes. And by putting a piece of cardstock inside the envelope, I was able to color them with the alcohol markers and not have it seep through to the back side of the envelope. So you can color with alcohol markers. I'm just going around to make sure I have all the leaves. It looks like it. Now this one has just a couple of leaves, but it also has the grass. So with that, I'm going to do the medium. And come in and just kind of color in those blades and just a little bit along those lines that are here and I'm just kind of doing the dot just dotting down here all right so that is done and then the last thing I did was I came in with kind of this um, tan blend but I used the the kind of has to me a, a um, umber look like a burnt umber. So I'm gonna just dot each of those little little berries or buds or whatever they might be. And that just gives another color, another depth. And then after that, I'll show you how I did the words on the original. I'm going to make that a dot instead of a leaf. It could have been either. I'll come back and make sure that's colored in the leaf color. See, it's easy to miss one. And while you don't have to color in every leaf that's on there, that's totally up to you on how you do it. Just about there. I don't want to go too fast and mess up because that's what happens when you go too fast. All right, that looks good, and I think there was just one leaf I wanted to come back and get up here. Make that a leaf. All right, so that's done. So I asked in my VIP Facebook group how to color the letters, and they wanted to see a um, kind of an ombre where you go dark to light. So what I did was I started with the darkest of the same green, and I just colored at the top of the letters. I tried to keep them so they went about the same height all the way down. I like the S, there's not going to be much light on that. And it turned out really good. I really liked it. I often ask for ideas from my Facebook group. I find that I have some very creative friends. I think we're all creative in our own way. We just have to get out of our get out of our way sometimes. We are like our worst critic. All right, that looks good. And then what I did was I came in with just the lightest. I didn't do the medium. I just came in with the lightest. And then this time I am going to shade just a little. Now normally if I'm going to do some shading I would have done each letter separately or each part but this one went pretty fast so it worked pretty good. You just want to kind of get it to have a little bit of a blend between the two. And I'm just going to color the bottom section and just kind of make sure that I 
go through all the way through the dark and bring it into the light because it's going to activate that that um, ink from up above and bring it down and not I just don't want it to have like a line between the two which sometimes happens if you let it dry too much so far it's been pretty good now if you want to be for sure then do each letter separate do the dark then the light then the and that will um, ensure it so there is that and then all I did after that is when I fussy cut to I don't cut all the way to I leave a white outline that's just how I do it you can cut all the way up to it it's up to you to the image it's totally up to you and I try to, to turn the paper and not the scissors I learned that um, actually from watching somebody on a home and garden who was cutting out some images out of wallpaper back several 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 years ago probably even a couple of decades but that was where I learned that so then this one will go up here and then the small one will be the one that covers the last part of that mushroom now I did some pop-ups because I like some depth in mine cards I don't like things to just always be um, even though this could be considered a rather simple card you see that that one can go down here and so on this one all I would do was just put some adhesive on the back and put it where I wanted it to go and then on this one what I like to use is um, our shaker cards we have uh, the acetate and the circle foam for our shaker cards and you get to keep these center pieces so you can use them uh, I think it really extends your pop-ups because we have the 3d foam and the 3d tape but uh, throw dots in the tape and then that's just popped up so then I have totally covered it then I added some of the stars I added some of the sparkle bling and then on the inside my plan is to take and put a green piece like this and then that's where I will stamp the sentiment so I hope you've enjoyed the quick video which probably wasn't as quick as I was planning on it and I hope that you um, like this stamp set and if you wish to get it my information will be in the um, section of this video the bottom section description part of the video so have a great Monday and I'll see you again next Monday for my favorite stamp set